Do you need help keeping track of all those new resolutions you've made or just want to try out sort of getting yourself organized this year? Well then keep watching because I'll be taking you through a free productivity app that I absolutely love. medical student studying in Sydney, Australia, and I promised this video a while ago. Since I use Todoist um, for my sort of daily tasks <laughs> and to-do items, but I actually have a video coming out about Todoist, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. But then 2020 happened, and I stopped using the app as much, and it just didn't ever appear. But we're here now and I'll be taking you through all the reasons why I love and how I set up the app Todoist. As always, I'll have the chapters all sort of listed down below so feel free to jump around. If you want to pause while you set up your Todoist along with me, that's excellent. I'll be taking you through sort of a brief intro in how um, the app works and then also how I set it up for school and life and habit forming and everything like that. So if you're hoping to get on track, then let's just get started. So first and foremost, what is Todoist? Um, it's essentially a to-do list app, but it is a lot more than that. There's a desktop extension which comes in handy and you're able to do repeating tasks um, scheduled multiple times a week, group tasks together, and track all of your productivity. So it is actually quite powerful, which is why I really like it instead of just, say, a to-do list in my notes app on my phone. There is a premium subscription. I've honestly never subscribed. Um, so I clearly don't think I need it. Obviously you can dive into that if you'd like, but otherwise it's just the cost, which I believe is free, for whatever it is on the App Store or the Google Play, and then you can download the desktop as well. So let's just jump into it. I will open the app on my phone um, and I'll take a little screen grab, kind of scooch myself over here so you can see it, and we can get started. So this is the app down here. I have changed it to be this color because I just think it's pretty, um, but it starts as a red and white icon that you'll see, um, and you can just go in to change that. So obviously when you first open the app, you will be prompted to make an account, and it's going to ask for an email address. I have it connected to my personal email, and as you can see, when I go into the settings, if you go to notifications, you can choose which emails you're subscribed to, and I'm subscribed to what's called the Daily Digest, and that just essentially sends you an email every morning of what you've got on the docket that day, and I find that really helpful. That's why I give it my personal email, um, so I always have contact to it on my phone um, when I first wake up in the morning or sort of on my desktop, but you don't really need that if you've got the app to. It's just helpful. There we go. Back to the beginning. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Let's just start with creating a task. So to do that, all you have to do is press the plus button down at the bottom, and there you have it. You just type in your task. It's as easy as that. So say, like, I have to get groceries. But I actually have to get groceries tomorrow. And this is what I love about the app. It already intuitively understands when I type tomorrow that it's going to schedule it for tomorrow's list. And then I just send it. You guys silly? I'm still going to send it. <laughs> and it has been added to my inbox, you can see there. And yeah, I can keep going, I can keep adding more tasks. One note um, about the inbox for all of you late night dwellers, um, it does reset immediately at midnight and I can't change that. So say you have a task that is set every day before bed and you don't go to bed until after midnight, so say it's Tuesday after midnight, it's technically Wednesday, so if you check it off, it will remind you on Thursday. So just keep that in mind. Maybe go to bed before midnight. <laughs> and along with scheduling tasks really intuitively, it can also really easily repeat tasks. So say, for example, and I'll talk about this a little bit more in depth when I talk about school, but I would always have a tutorial on Friday. So obviously you want to get the reading done for that at least by Thursday, hopefully, right? So if I write tutorial reading every Thursday, you can see that little, if I spell it right, you can see that little repeating sign there, it tells me it's going to repeat. But even better, my semester doesn't last all year and my schedule might change. Say I only need this reminder for 10 weeks. For 10 weeks. It knows that. So it's only going to remind me for Thursdays 
10 in a row. And there we go, added to my inbox. So I've been saying inbox, etc. It's right up at the top, maybe here. <laughs> we'll try. Um, and essentially that's any task that you haven't really otherwise sorted. Um, you haven't necessarily assigned it to be specifically today or it's coming up soon. So as we can see, I've got this groceries, which we just made, and the tutorial reading because I haven't grouped that in any way, shape, or form. The other options are things today. So these are other tasks I've previously assigned to be done today. And upcoming gives you a bit of a scroll and it lets you know that things are coming up. So the tutorial reading there, if I said it was done, it would jump to the next Thursday. I don't have to remember to delete that. While we're here at the bottom, you can see labels and filters. Those are premium features. I don't miss them. It essentially allows you to prioritize um, and to group things in another way but I do all my grouping by calling things projects. So for me, project, like anything, is just a group of tasks. I use this either for real projects, like a school assignment or something, but also for grouping things that are part of a habit or routine that I'm trying to maintain. So for example, I usually have my school, and I would encourage you to have a school one as well if you're a student, and that's where you can file all of those sort of do my tutorial readings on Thursdays and my lab report every Sunday and get into that routine with your syllabi. Oh, and my school calendar matches the color of my calendar for school in my Google calendar, so that's fun. And the second one that I would recommend anybody just starting out with to do is has is a daily task or like a routine or habits section of things that will repeat sort of every day. So when you decide to add a new project, you obviously can name it, so I'm just going to name this testing123, and you can assign it a color, um, and you can share it with someone, and I have tested this, I did share it with at least one person, and I was able to do that not on premium. You can either choose a list or a board format. So a list is just going to be very standard, it's going to look like a list. Um, and then a board, to me, it looks like one of those Asana boards, but I think of that for projects with sort of multiple steps or multiple people responsible for things, um, something that needs a bit more separation within the same project. But to show you what a board looks like, you add a section, so this is me, and you can add a task, scroll, add a task, and you see how the boards, you can kind of swipe through them. So for school, this could be really helpful for say, if you have a big assignment that you know is due at a certain date and you know there's sort of check marks with the professors of when you can hand your rough draft in. You could have a research board or a research list within the board and then a rough draft list with the dates that they're due so that you're not falling behind on your classes and then a finalized with the final due date. That's how I would use that if I was still um, doing school projects that kind of required that sort of system. And of course as well, when you create a project, it gives you that option to assign a parent project. That's essentially nesting this list under another one. Um, so it's kind of similar to a board, you could say, um, but it may come in handy for other things like school or just how your brain likes to organize things. And that's just called a parent project and you can assign it to one that's already made. But now that you know how to schedule tasks, add tasks, and create a project, I'll dive a little bit more deeply into how I use Todoist for different aspects of my life and to really kind of harness all of the power in this app. So first and foremost is sort of the daily list, which you would just use like any other sort of to-do list. It's just adding things into the inbox as they come up throughout the day, you're thinking, oh, I gotta get groceries tomorrow, or oh, I wanna do this later today, or maybe sort of at the end of the day, you schedule everything that you'd like to do for the next day, sort of like my study priorities for that study session, or chores that I need to do around the house, things I don't wanna forget. That same sort of closing out the day where you'd write a list down, you just pop it in to-do list, just standardly. For school, as I alluded to, this is where the repeating tasks really come in handy for those weekly tasks that you always have to do in uni, like discussion posts, tutorial readings, um, attendance if you're really bad at that, um, and different things like that that you know is going to happen every week or every other week. You can easily put that in. I usually create a project to nest all of my school assignments um, as sort of the daily repeating ones, and then for specific larger projects, I may make it separate or kind of nest it under the school as a parent project, as I said. Um, I really, really enjoyed this when I was in undergrad when I first used it, um, and 
the beginning of 2020 when I was doing med school, it was really helpful to keep on top of those things I knew I'd always have to do. Obviously, safer readings, the chapter list changes and stuff, but the fact that you have reading doesn't. So I would just put it in as do X unit reading every Wednesday. And the nice thing is if you get it done ahead of time, you can still see it in the upcoming tasks and take it off. But for me, the really, really powerful tool for Todoist, especially around this time of year when you're setting resolutions and such, is creating good habits. So I always keep, um, you can see on my projects, I have one for health and one for sort of daily habits, but you can just put them all in one. And these are those daily things that you want to improve on, the daily things that you want to do or change in 2021. So that's like, if I want to journal every day, I'd put that in as a bullet, have it repeating every day, or run three times a week, and it will remind me three times that week that I wanted to go running. And I think that's just something that should not be understated. And when you are making that list, when you're setting it up right now, keep in mind how many different daily goals you have, because that will come into play in the goal setting section, which is really what makes Todoist a great tool for productivity as well as sort of motivation. Um, if you look at that pie chart right up at the top, that is your daily goal of tasks. So obviously you could set that at whatever number you want. Um, I chose to set it at the same number of daily routines that I would like to do so that I know bare minimum if I do my daily tasks, I've sort of reached my goal for the day. Now you can track it daily and weekly. Unfortunately, weekly is a premium feature. I don't miss it. <laughs> um, and you can see it at the end of the year, you can track your sort of karma, which is points that you gain for completing your daily goal every day or surpassing it. And what's really fun is at the end of the year, it gives you all these statistics on sort of when you're the most productive, what you got done the most, what you skipped the most. And that's really exciting to kind of nerd out about and let me know if you want to see me at the end of 2021 and see what we've done and how productive I've been. And finally, I'm gonna swap this out um, and show you the desktop app. Um, it's really self-explanatory. It looks just like the app on the phone, just a bit bigger. Um, you can still see all of your projects and you can still see your daily list and add tasks very easily. I just really like that it exists because it means that when I'm having a study day, I can put the productivity sucker away and still see the study list that I set out for myself on my desktop. Um, and also you have that email reminder if you signed up for it. And there you have it. That's how I use this little app to keep me motivated and structured and how I am sort of approaching it and have approached it in the past for school and life and I really think it's helped me in the past. Nothing could really help 2020 so I can't blame the app but hopefully it helps 2021 and yeah give this video a like if you want to see more of my productivity tips and tricks um, and comment down below if you set any resolutions and what those might be or how you're going to use the app. I know I promised this video a really long time ago, but if you have any other requests, please let me know, and hopefully they won't take me a year to do. If you're new here, please subscribe, and you'll be able to see more videos like this, as well as vlogs, so that you kind of get an idea of my whole journey to my journey through med school in Australia. And that's it. I will see you in the next one. Bye. I guess this means that I can take film video today off my list.